Hello, um, today we'll be um, going over how scripting works in Virtual Studio. So, first of all, we need to first identify the difference between scripts and local scripts. As you may know, local scripts are only for the client, meaning this won't affect the server, meaning this other players in the game won't see or the script won't behave on them at directly unless stated uh, inside the script. A server script looks like this. It acts on the server and affects the server directly and replicates it on the client. You can also see the Roblox documentation for more explanation or a much more cl cleaner and proper explanation. So um, let's go over how scripting works in Little Studio. So here is an example. Let's say we have a part in Workspace. We have a cube and uh, we want to change the color of it. So we'll go take the set object property and then click on here to direct where to take click on part or the object you want to change and then you have to change the brick color which is the property for changing the color as you can see we can do it directly in here you can change it here but let's say we want to change it to brick color really red so now if you test it should display a red color as you can see it displays a red color so let's say we want to change we want the part to have random colors so we'll do random brick color and then we'll change the output so the output is like the result so it's the result so you want to change the name or give a variable name so we change the we we'll put the name as brick color result and then we set the part and brick color and we change we put variable so we can have we can use the result from this in here and we want it to change with a weight block so a weight block is basically how many seconds it will change so let's put three and then we'll put while so a while loop is a loop that will always continue unless unless the condition in here is false so let's say one is equal to one so this will always run except if we put one equal to two this will this will won't run so let's put the, let's let me show you a demonstration of this so as you can see this will change colors as you can see it's working but let's say we put one equal to which is false by the way so as you can see this won't change at all this won't change at all um, next we can um, look at um, print which is basically a message that sends to the output tab so we can know info more information for example we could put the brick color result from the random brick color block and then it will say lily white for example which is lily white seashell slime green cool yellow which does match Okay, um, next uh, we'll see how operations work. So let's say um, you want to add, for example, let's say you have a leader start, right? Let's say you have points of a leader start. And for like forever, you will always have one point every second. So, you have to put a while loop which will always continue doing unless the statement here is false, I've already explained it. 
and then you have to put get leader start which gets the information from the leader start which is the leaderboard info so um so this is more for a single player but basically we'll this is not the proper way of doing it but for demonstrations this is how you have to do it and we get the point points info you get the number and then you put plus five for example and then you have the addition result so you set the leader start of property you click the use variable you put the information the correct information and put a weight block because it can lag often so as you can see you have to wait one second wait it's not working let me see what what went wrong uh, okay so i think you have to put a weight block so it wait. Uh, oh okay i see what i did so i didn't put the exact the correct one so this will, this should be correct now yeah as you can see it's adding up and this is how you use um, mathematics or the mathematics blocks in virtual studio so now i'll be explaining a bit more about how the actions works so i'll be focusing on this this this, 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 and I'll also focus on this as well. And you can, it's okay. So, uh, the set property or property is basically to set a property, which means um, you have to ins put a value to. A property of an object for example the scripts values uh, properties are achievable disabled use local variables which you can change as well as its name but you can change the class name because it will always be it's fixed you cannot change the parent you can also change um, next the get object property so for the get object property you, um, it's basically a block that allows us to take an information for example we can take the name information of an ob of an object in workspace name so for example let's put this and then we put print i took the value output name so for this is how it displays it says part so this works um, next creating creating an object so basically um, you need to check the Roblox documentation or you can simply check in here for example if you want to create an object as in adding an object from the this list you can for example let's add um, a tool you have to Press, uh, this is the class names. This is the class name lists of existing tools that can be put inside workspace and other spaces as well. So as you can see, we can create and we have this a tool. Okay. Next, um, we can also destroy objects. For example, we can destroy the base plate, which is necessary but not that necessary. As you can see, it's gone. When we were in the studio, it was just there. So this is this allows us to destroy objects. So cloning object, it's self -exp explanatory. Um, it can clone objects. For example, we can clone this into game.workspace. And as you can see, it will clone here. I don't know where it is. Yeah, it's here. 
when it's not at all here in studio. So this block is basically an if statement, but to know the class type, the class name, the yeah. So is a I should put this. For example, if you want to check if a block, for example, in here is a local script, we can verify it and then we can check the output of it by put, connecting a, a print block and it says true. So yes, the animation printer block is indeed a local script. Now finding first, first find first child is basically a block that lets us find an object, an object's name. For example, let's say in this file we want to search for Tommy Equip, which is an animation I made inside the game that works with those animations, which is the direction to take. And then we uh, give an output name. And then we can print if found. So, for example, it says nil. Um, oh, yeah, uh, there was a mistake. Yeah, so as you can see, it does, it did find, but sometimes if there's nothing inside of it. For example, if I put uh, something else, it will... wait. Yeah, as you can see, it didn't, it didn't uh, output anything because it didn't find it. Okay, now getting children off is basically a block that lets us get the children a list which, which, is, which is called a table in Lua and in Vitor Studio as well. So this will get the get the children of this uh, part. Now we use a print block to know, and this lets us know everything that is inside. So it does match up. So it is correct. Um, now onto firing uh, remote blocks. So um, a remote block is remote event is basically a block that lets us send information from the client to the server and vice versa. So, for example, I have this animation um, model I've made right here, which lets us play animations. For example, here, here I can play an animation. That's, uh, that's sent from a local script and then received by another uh, which is received by a service script and then sent to a local script. So, as you can see here, whenever the key down is E, uh, I can get to fire a remote event with parameters, which is basically information I can give, I can send to, so the server can treat it and do whatever it has to do. So parameters are basically five in information you can send. You can only send like you cannot send tables in Veto Studio, but you can send single um, single informations such as booleans, numbers, strings, tuples, objects. Objects you can't you can, but uh, you have to clone it afterwards. You dims uh, basically everything in here. Then. Um, by using the receive remote event, the service script will receive the parameters and then do its magic, as you can see in here. Next, uh, receiving from a local script, as you can see here, receive remote event to clients to also do it the same thing as the server remote event, receiving events. And um, yeah, so bindable um, events uh, also work that way, but they're only server-sided, meaning you can send 
or at least it's not widely used for it. You can only, it's mostly sent for server-sided scripts. Um, so yeah, I think I've covered most of the information needed to work on Vettel Studio, and I hope um, this lets you um, learn more and create much more easily scripts and as well as creating content, I guess. <laughs> Bye.